life in Los Angeles at the World Championships. And honestly, if you're not down here, you best get yourselves down here tomorrow. There's going to be plenty of space available, so make sure you are in and around the area of LA Live. Obviously, if you're living in a different country, it could be a problem. It might be hard to get down here for the next day, but either way, I'm waiting for Saigon Jokers to see if they try anything creative or whether they're just comfortable enough on their champions to take out Najin. Najin's all five grouped up in this triangle brush. You can see Saigon Jokers are really playing defensively. They're trying to guard against and invade. Najin Sword might try to make something happy, but if they're not threatened by Saigon Jokers, there's no need to risk a level one. They could pass a farm and hopefully take it that way. It's really interesting to see what they decide here. Yeah, absolutely. We're just seeing which are they going to go into it. It would be death to anyone entering that tri-bush. I think Ezreal's tempted to go near it. They're probably going to queue towards it. And just taking my eye, it is Archie that's taking a peek there. He's doing a bit of a disco dance. Najin Sword going to go up towards the blue buff. So Archie's going to spot them. Well, look just... at this. That's an Aurelia and a Lux in the bottom lane. And they really have a just odd setup right here because they're guarding against a blue invade. They got the pings down, but why, oh, why is Aurelia bottom lane with Lux? Why, oh, why indeed? Who to we to question why? We are just here. Let's call the shots. And as it is, it's going to be watch starting out on the Elder Raid. Down. The Golems will be going to pray. So standard lanes from Najin Sword by looks of it. Prey and Kane on that bottom lane. And like you say, QTB is waiting here. Are they waiting to try and get a gank early on? Because Ezreal is still lingering as well. I think they want to get a level one. So he still has the teleport. This is something actually the Team Legion in North America does fairly frequently. They'll three in the bottom brush and just kind of only show the one. So two will be waiting in the brush and they'll just kind of farm. And they'll wait for them to push up thinking there's only one guy there and then try to jump out at them with two. If that doesn't work or doesn't, they'll go. go out and teleport out. They flash straight on towards Bray. They managed to get the light bind across. Surely should be first, but it will nice. be. The QTB picks it up. You shouted yes because you called it right. It's just, an, I love it when that play works because <laughs> it's one of those strategies, the very first game that everyone who played League of Legends, they run into a brush and two guys yeah. are waiting for there and they kill five people down the and bottom lane, you're just like, what? that that strategy still works at the highest level is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, now everybody's thinking back to their, you know, their early days in League of Legends going, and they all know that one guy everyone that checked the bush down the bottom. More than more I guarantee you. You know, Doublelift is famous for being space checking, so you know everybody has done it, even at the pro level. So it worked out very well. We thought, to be honest, he was giving it away, and it worked out very nicely, which immediately means that Gollum advantage that the blue side has is completely backfired because Archie hit level two first. And the interesting thing about all that is QTB didn't actually teleport back up at the top lane. He decided to walk, which means he missed a fair number of minions, and MacDoon has an immediate experience advantage on the QTV. QTV got the kill, so he has the first blood gold, but even then, MacNoon might still be able to bully him out of that. So, early gold advantage, obviously, towards Saigon Jokers. Still almost said Singapore sentence. Just, I was still that, still, still that surprised that they didn't make it. But Saigon Jokers here on full merit. And they are representing the whole of Vietnam here. And even the Probably. Singapore Sentinels actually released a video saying they absolutely deserve to be here. They beat yeah. us, they've improved so much, and good luck. So that was a really good sportsmanship thing to see from Singapore Sentinels. And it just shows Saigon Jokers did qualify in here. They're completely legit. They won the games. They deserve to be a little bit respected, especially with that first blood. Yeah, and with, with all calls to the honor system, Singapore Sentinels definitely singing the praises for that one. Tribush Ward will spot Violet. He's going to try and make his way down that bottom lane. As it is, as it stands. Take us through the lanes, Jan. I mean, we talked about this top lane to start with. QTB getting dived on the turret a little bit by McNoon, taking a little bit of damage. He's got a massive creep wave he needs to fend off here. Meanwhile, down the bottom here and seeing Archie trying to go aggressive on Prey. Can he finish him off? Archie actually taking oh, nice a tower in. Surely will finish him off. He does get the kill, but he went down on the back of it. Kane managed to return the kill. He may even be able to get the kill on towards Lux there, just forces him away. All aggression that bottom lane, so let's try to get into the middle lane. Mid. Nix Water actually getting caught out here by Watch. Watch wanted to prove to the world that he is the best, well, honestly, the best Skana player in the world. Well, you gotta go against Diamond Prox to prove that one because he plays a pretty mean Skana himself. Looking into the top lane here while we have a second, the Aurelia versus the Jace matchup. Mac Noon thinks Jace can beat everything in top lane. That's why he first picked it, and he's very comfy on it. Thus far, with that experience advantage, he's going to look to just keep pressed, counter gank potentially from Skarner here if he sees Violet, and they could maybe get something here going on. Yeah, and that would also explain why he wanted to see Soaz here from Fnatic. As it is, Mac Noon's got to be careful. He doesn't go too deep on this one. Violet is there, but Watch is helping out. 
red buff though, Magnu continues to get that damage down onto him. Not quite happy to just stick it out there. This aggression that he shows on Violet just starting to burn down his hit points. But QTV will be able to manage to sustain himself. But the two junglers, it's almost becoming a, a double lane at that top. And in that top lane, Mac Noon is going to be a bully to QTB. QTB needs to wait until he's got a lot of levels before he can actually duel Mac Noon or just try to run him out of mana. Since they're both low, that's going to be a tricky lane. Going into the mid lane, we have the Karthus versus the Rise. This is going to be all about setup for the ganks right here. If he lands that Dark Binding, oh, we have something. Never mind, we don't have something going down bottom. Song is going to try to not get shoved by Karthus. Nyxwater, as Karthus, usually outfarms everyone. So far, seven minions up onto Rise. It's really all about whether they can turn ganks around for Rise onto Karthus. Looking in the bottom lane, this lane is just about all up aggression and brawling because the Lux and Ezreal are in it to fight and they have no sustain. So every time they go in for a trade, every time they go in for a, dark, for a light binding, there's a potential for someone to die. So really the bottom lane, as you've seen already, is most likely going to have the most action. Yeah, and actually I noticed that it was Kane or Prey, it was down the bottom there, it was Kane who was staying a long way away from the experience. Prey is just farming it up because he had fell behind. Kane, you can see, he's actually a level advantage over Prey at the moment, and he was just staying out of it, staying, letting all the experience go to Kane. The top lane, no QTV, Mac Noon just finished him off there. He just stuck around longer and eventually just got chipped away at. Mac Noon actually putting zero points in his W thus far, everything going in to his E and his Q, so all his main damaging burst spells are getting as much ramp as possible. He didn't even level up his ultimate come level 6, which is why QTV got surprised by that burst damage, because most Jaces are not going to have that skill set up come level 6. And as it is, Arch and Judy down that bottom lane, they've been poked pretty heavily. I think they're going to have to back away from this one, because Kane and Prey definitely working them over slowly but surely. And you can see the health bots being burnt through. Archie now completely out of health bots again. That shield from Judy just trying to cover him off there. He has gone for the double door and is trying his best to keep that sustain on, but... Prey slowly but surely is going to dive in towards it. Junior will get taken down. That's going to be the QTV teleporting in there. Are they going to be able to finish off Prey? The crescendo goes across. It will be enough. Can they get on towards Kane though? QTV just needs to go one dash. Blocked off by the minions. That's too much to tower dive. Oh, now Watch is going to rejoin it. He has got his ultimate available, but he's not going to go for it and just backs away. He didn't quite have enough mana to combo on the things there with Watch. He would have been able to flash ult someone, but then he wouldn't have been able to follow it up, and he was worried he was going to die to QTV. He didn't want to actually pull someone in to his Sona. Other than that, lots of pings going down. Song getting caught out by a ward. So much aggression going down in that bottom lane, and QTV camping. They don't expect him to still be there, but Song coming down as well. They have to fall back. QTV out of position. Out of position. He does dive onto a Song now. Archie seems to be the target, but because QTV won onto the Song there, they should be able to pick it up. A brilliant taunt there coming out from Violet. Turns it into a double kill. Absolutely spectacular stuff. And Saigon Jokers keeping themselves in this one. 5 4 up. The top turret will go down though. Mac Noon opening up the exchange and taking the first turret of the game. They meet. Mac Noon is crushing Aureli in the top lane, but because of that, QTB realized he's not able to lean against Jace, and he's trying to make things happen elsewhere. All that action in the bottom lane has given them the kill advantage. It's really just a matter of they have to find a way to deal with Mac Noon. Mac Noon went the Brutalizer. They're going to have to focus him in team fights and try to kill him out early. But overall, nine minutes into the game, Saigon Jokers doing an amazing job showing Naj and Sword that they're not to be taken for granted. Absolutely, as it is at the moment, this bottom lane continuing to push on, so Prey returning back, and he's gone. Jace now gone with a brutalizer in that top lane. He wants to really absolutely knock seven bells out of him. Looks like Faze is going to oh, get built up. Shen Kane's getting caught out again here. Archie's going to dive on towards him. There's the Shen ultimate coming down. And he's going to immediately taunt him out there. Can they finish off on towards Bray here? Might have went looking for him. Mac Noon joins the party though. He comes down. Can they get towards Archie? Yes, they can. Mac Noon gets one. Can they get a second? They're just trying to get towards Judy. Lifeline just keeping them away there. I feel that Mac Noon wants to punish this one. Dude, Judy realizes it, tries to take down the minions, tries to force them away here, and they realize that they're in danger of being dived on the turret. And this is actually really quite exceptional by Mac Noon. Four points into Q, four points into E. He has not put a point into W or R yet this game, so he's trying to maximize his Q E damage. This is something I have not seen Jace's do. Maybe it's my ignorance, or maybe it's just Mac Noon doing something crazy, because it is working out amazingly well for them so far. Absolutely, you can see Prey is going to continue driving him on that turret. Does he is, he is going to take it down. I was about to say that's very un-Korean of it. The Koreans very much take that advantage. Once they see that turret, they will take it down very quickly. So QTV now, Santa Farm his way back up in that top lane. He has been involved, but Matt Noon, 66 CS, 50 CS, 200, proving why he's a danger man.
It's really going to be about Magnoon roaming around now and tanking down turrets. He took the turret top by himself really easily. The instant he goes bottom, he gets kills and takes another turret. He's probably going to farm up here top very briefly, then maybe try to force mid and get the third. Najin Sword loves to keep on the pressure. This is going to be very interesting how Magnoon transitions the rest. All of his skill points going into Shock Blast and Acceleration Gate, those EQs are going to truck down Cyclone Jokers if they get into any kind of siege situation. Absolutely. We've just seen Judy marking up the territory, as it were, down by the Dragon. And while Magnoon continues just to farm up in this top lane, he's really caused himself a problem. Where's he heading? He's just got to keep your eye on Magnoon. Once he starts heading somewhere, it generally means there's going to be a kill that will follow. Looks like he's going to go heading in towards the mid layer. That's what's going for Sneaks Water. Needs to be careful. Also, the so dragon is up. They could potentially. Archie and Juni are actually Blast heading over that. towards the dragon already. You can see Shen is there. And they are going to pull out the dragon. You can see Dragon is going to come out as it is. Aren't Nashi Sword aware of this? And they don't seem to be. Or are they even going to bother going for it? It looks like Saigon Jokers are just going to pick this one up without any problems. There it is. Free Dragon. Thank you very much. Can they stop Nashi Sword? taking down the turret, that's the question. The Ezreal Ultimate comes across, they're gonna have to tank it up there. You can see Watch just off on the side there, and that's gonna be an immediate engage. Kuki B going in, getting dropped into the crescendo, hitting the entire team, taking them down. Cyclone Joker's dropping left and right. Archie needs to be careful. Violet being the next target. Violet getting dropped by Magnoon again. Another double kill for Magnoon. Now he is 4-0 and absolutely dominating here. Saigon Jokers weren't quite sure of that one. They came in for the fight, but Najin Sword were ready and waiting. Najin Sword was daring them to fight there. They may or may not have known the dragon, but with how far up they were pushing that tower, they were just waiting for Saigon Jokers to come fight them. And boy, were they ready. The crescendo really winning them that fight, setting up everything else, and they could potentially take a second turn off that exchange. Absolutely, they're gonna go straight into the second in the Archie can do nothing but watch. He is hope helpless. Just spectate this one, just like the rest of us here in the crowd. We just have to watch that turret going down. And Najin Sword turning that one small advantage of losing the dragon and fighting and just turning it into such a massive advantage, taking two turrets off the back of it. And with all that, they're all going back. Whole heaps of gold on a lot of them. Mac Noon, 1900 gold. He's going to turn that in to a BF sword. So he's going to be absolutely rushing with those EQ combos because that's all he's put points into a level. And he's maxed his acceleration gate. He's maxed his shock blast and it's just a huge unreal amount of burst damage that comes down into Jace at level 10 already. How is Saigon Jokers going to deal with that? Four turrets to zero down already. Total aggression coming out from Najin. Yeah, so watch here. Eight six up the kills. 21k to 17.2 so gold advantage clearly coming from those turrets that Najin Sword have just been taking down left, right and centre. All the outer turrets currently down, the one inner turret down. Magic Sword definitely with map control. Just going to drive things home and see if they can pick anyone off there, Magnoon. And it's like you said about the acceleration gate. You know, he's just picking people off left and right with that thing. It's a pain in the pain for. Uh, <laughs> I had to be. I had to watch what I said there uh, for arrows. But you know, uh, here on the moment on the top lane, we saw Soaz with it so delicately, just ripping through teams at the EU regionals for Fnatic. And honestly, the teams have just picked it up from there on in. You know, Nanja and Magnu actually mentioned Soaz in his uh, brief, you know, saying that he was, it's a shame that he didn't actually get to meet Soaz here. He just, which is obviously where a lot of players have picked up Jays from. We've seen uh, Dyrus running it as well lately. It's really, once you learn how to play Jace, you're a huge threat. And Mac Noon is just one of the masters, really. He was drawing bans from it during the Korean regionals, and I'm expecting bans from it in the rest of this group because this is so, so difficult for Saigon Jokers to deal with. They did, really, they were holding the map pretty well, aside from QTV losing that lane early. Then QTV went to Rome, and we thought that was all well and good, but then Mac Noon went to Rome and really just turned the game on its head. So as it is, because Ivana's trying to farm out in that top lane. Meanwhile, Archie, he's got to be careful. He doesn't get caught out here. Rise, definitely feel aggressive for this one. It's one of the things that's been mentioned. Song has started to go a lot more aggressive than he used to. He used to be that passive. Oh, Violet up top. Almost Scarra. Violet is definitely going to get caught out. Dropped in seconds there. And Watch just popping that ulti, just hooking him in. There was no escape from that one. Magnoon just picking up another assist. 4 0 2 for Magnoon. 2 1 2. And you talked about this build earlier on with the boost of ability and the Oracle being built very early on. And now with Watch, since they have the advantage, since they've taken down towers, there's not much Saigon Jokers can do to farm because, as we saw there, Najin can wait in brushes and know that they're not have vision on because they just both fall into the brush. Everyone on Saigon Jokers really 
restrained to their base. These outer turrets could very well fall. Their jungle is no longer their own. The lanes are no longer their own. And Najin doing a great job at just pressuring around and keeping Saigon Jokers on their heels. QTV's got to be careful he doesn't get collapsed on here. I can see Song just going around the side there. A whole of Saigon Jokers now. This is going to be a full-on 5v5 in this top lane. The ping's going down. I think Saigon Jokers may have realized that the whole team is there. QTV getting caught out by the Rise Ultimate going across them. You can see Mac Noon just trying to get around the side. He wants to really start things off here. The Kane Crescendo, I've talked about it earlier on. It seems to be the best, big thing that starts off the team fight. Once that Crescendo hits across, and he seems to land it across a minimum of three players every time. They're going to tank up against the turret here. You can see they really want to start to fight, but instead they're like, oh, are we going to have to take this turret down? Okay, fine. We wanted a fight, really. Saigon Jokers got very heavily poked down there. The Rise Ultimate actually did a substantial amount of damage, and then Archie got hit pretty hard by a shot class from Mac Noon. They're most likely just going to go all around the map here and take out the second tier turrets in every single lane individually. They have five turrets now, soon to be six. They're just oh. making sure to keep up their goal. The map news folks, we just saw it blast across there. Carbon's hit points dropped instantly. He has now got that BS sword. He's just getting stronger and stronger by the minute and moment, Mac Noon. Proving really you know, why he's so popular. He's, he's definitely one of the fan favorites, uh, certainly in Korea, and, and in, honestly in the Western world as well. You know, he was over here in the season two. Uh, the, the Riot the, Games the, World Invitational. The Riot Games World Invitational, yeah, that you guys played and obviously made the was to play in uh, Yi. Yeah, Mac Noon may have beat us pretty badly. Uh, <laughs> he clicked Nasus, destroyed us, picked Yi, built four Phantom Dancers, and destroyed us. So. He kind of made you look silly. Sad memories. And that, that was the live testing team, I believe, made it. So well. Yeah, now, now that I've seen you all in the office, I'm pretty sure that's all of you guys that are all sat there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you guys, we guys were spanked by Mac Noon, and you know what? It doesn't make you feel too bad when he starts doing it against other pro teams, so honestly, you shouldn't feel too bad for yourself. And he has just completed that Bloodthirst of 4 0 230 CS. And you know, we talked about it earlier. The CS isn't really the thing that Najin will go for at the moment. It's the kills. It is, and that's normally what Saigon Jokers like to do. They love to just go for kills and try to create a lot of action early. It's just Najin's swords made more action, and they're beating them at Saigon Joker's kind of own game. Here they're going for another dragon. Global goal getting bigger and bigger. And Saigon Joker's is too weak at this point to go for kills in a lot of situations. Yeah, they, they cannot get involved in this one, and they're wise not to. They're just going to sit back and farm. They're in that dangerous, dangerous situation where they're group farming. So really the experience, the gold has been spread too thinly. And Archie's got to be very careful he doesn't get caught out of position. And here is a three-man gang squad coming from Saigon Jokers. You can see they've used the speed. gate. And Archie was well ready for it, but watch managed to hook straight in. And that is a very dead Archie. And watch ended up picking up the kill. They weren't really that bothered. And now Bray actually picking off Judy, trying to 1v3 them here and have to back away from that one. He has got the help coming out. Song's going to come around the side. Violet's got to be careful he doesn't get caught out. Here comes Song. He's going to try and get involved. Nick Swartz could easily get caught out. The wall of the paint diving out towards Song. Could it be a bait? QTB going to be the target. They're just turning around. Look, he's trying to get forced back. QTB's gonna get away. The Ignite is running. Song is still there. The flash from Kane. Flash crescendo from Kane going full on aggression. The rest of his team oh. were not with him. But Mac Noon from downtown slams it home. And that's gonna be the Carthens ulti doing nothing to stop them. And Najin Sword will take the first inhibitor phase. Oh, Song got caught by RT Desperate Ultimate just as he's about to exit. And that's gonna be careful. Long range skill shots galore, and that is a big play overall for Najin Sword. Nothing is slowing down Mac Noon, and that boots of mobility Skarner comboed with the gate from Jace was an unreal amount of speed. Archie had no way of escaping at the very start of that huge long engagement. <laughs> it was a very long engagement. I wasn't too sure whether Kane had gone a little bit too deep, but I forgot Mac Noon was in the team and then he just came back and supported him. It's all good. I love to see those flash crescendos. It's something I'm used to seeing Melisan used to do, and sadly he's no longer playing for Fnatic, he's obviously stopped playing League of Legends, but he used to do that quite regularly. We saw it at IEM New York where they went unstoppable, and you know, it's one of those uh, things you don't see. I mean, obviously we see Ghost of Pepper going very aggressive on Sona, but we don't tend to see the flash crescendos coming out, the full-on aggression from those support, and you know, that just shows, that backs up the theory that the whole team is an aggressive beast. Everyone on Najin's sword just goes. You don't see them sitting back. The last game you and I did was the CLG EU, just the last one. CLG EU is patient. Yeah. Najin Sword's not patient. Najin Sword goes. They take every small opportunity and just pounce on it. They execute and they are all out aggressive and it catches a lot of teams. They never have a time to think. They don't have a plan. Time to get a counterattack ready because they just get hit again and again and can never stand back up. 
which goes to show, you know, how strong CLG EU were to beat Nanjing Sword 3 1 in that semi finals of the OGN Summer Championships. You know, how they counted it, well, we will soon find out because they'll be playing each other in the next few games. So, I mean, there's so many good games still coming up. This is the very start of Group B, really. We've just seen COG EU beating Dignitas. If you missed that game, apologies. I've just spoiled it for you completely. You can check that VOD out. It was a pretty slow farming session, though, so I'm not going to lie. It was a little bit of a little bit, a bit of a damn squid, that one. So 12-7, Najin Sword, though, definitely an aggressive one. If I would recommend any game through the day, it would involve a Korean team or an Asian team because, honestly, they have all been super aggressive, and I love this style of play. So far, they've somewhat stolen the show from a lot yeah. of the other teams. They've been dominating almost all of their matchups. Really, the only Chinese or Korean team to lose thus far was when they played against each other. So right now, we actually see Macnum trying to split push while the other four are posturing around Baron. This is a little curious because Macnum is the strongest member. He has no reason to not be with the team right now. And it's at this point, Najin needs to think about turning the game into a victory. Saigon Jokers is at the point where they have to try to make a gambit play. This is really the last ditch effort if Saigon Jokers wants to do anything. Yeah, they realize that Mac Noon has now rejoined the team. He's pushed that bottom lane, so that's going to push itself, which means somebody's going to have to go deal with it. And Najin's sort of slowly but surely setting up for a Baron. Do they want the Baron? Or did they just want to force a fight at the Baron? And Relia seems seem to be going on towards QTV. QTV's got to be careful. He's already backtracking. He realizes the dangerous situation he was in. And Najin Sword, respect that, that he's going back already and trying to set up for some sort of gank. There's a real lack of wards from both teams in this, though. Forcing the fight would be ideal. Watch has been taking out all of Saigon Joker's wards. And Najin doesn't really care oh, to ward Juni. right now because they win every oh, fight. Oh, Juni. And Juni, ooh, ooh, scouting around. So ideally, right here, Najin wants to get a fight trying to take a Baron with the potential of a Lux and an Ezreal coming in for a steal as well as a potential Smite. That would be the only thing that can get Saigon Jokers back in the game. Najin Sword is so far ahead, they don't actually need Baron to get in this inhibitor, and that's what they kind of realized here. They realized Saigon wasn't going to try to come for a Baron fight. Instead, they're just going to walk up and take this inhibitor if they can get it. Yeah, there's no tower to stop them, so why not just go for it? McNoon actually opening up on the bush there just to take a little check there. Oh, he's just going to get a little bit of poke on towards that inhibitor. The question is, can they catch Saigon Jokers out? I'm expecting to see maybe a flash engage here from Song, or, or maybe even Kane, something to that extent. They are slowly but surely poking him out here. From all the pain hitting the team, but again, Prey not really that bothered. Nick's Waller getting dropped down a little bit there. McNew managed to land that accelerating gate spoon, and there it is. There's the flash engage straight away. The push end up got the cross the inside team. Saigon Joker's dropping left, right, and center. Nick's water going down. There's just one member left. It's going to be an ace. It is going to be Juni. And honestly, that Carthus ultimate may as well just throw a towel at Najin Sword because they have just ripped the team apart. Magnum, you can't tank two turrets, son. You may be good, but you're not that strong. And uh, <laughs> that may be put a little bit of damper on the back of it. He did the same thing in the final game against COGU. They won an ace, and he just ran straight into the Nexus <laughs> turret on Jace. Only death of the game for Mac Noon. That's almost his victory celebration. There the is a surrender. Matches. And there is surrender. GG to Najin Sword. Amazing job. Amazing, amazing job. Those flash engages, very strong. And Najin Sword looked very happy with that one, Mac Noon. Doing the two-man arm salute there. Uh, not to be confused with the, the finger salute, which uh, looks like... Looks like uh, we are getting from the team, so really happy with that one. I'll tell you what, I'm so impressed with the Korean teams right now. They have turned up at this tournament. You know, we talked about, you know, how nervous they may be coming into this one. They have shown no sign of nerves at all. You watch Najin Sword play in these team fights, and they're just faster than some of the games we're used to. The things happen in a quicker fashion. The fight starts, and it's over before you even realize it. They just so much execution, and Najin Sword is the best example of that. Okay, so let's just check out the scorecards from that game. And honestly, uh, you know, actually, we won't, we won't check out the scorecards. <laughs> I'll, I'll ignore that, so it's all good. I would